Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. Today's video is going to be a much requested topic here on this channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at how I weather US olive drab. Specifically in this video, I'm going to show you how I apply and wear the US olive drab to show this heavily scuffed finish that you often see instead of actual chipping effects. We will also look at how I applied some markings to the tank. We will use both some homemade masks for the stars and also the kit supplied decals in some other areas as well. So we'll look at how to use both of those. And lastly, the most important weathering step in my opinion is going to be to apply a wash to the model to accentuate all the details. So a lot of interesting stuff today and hopefully it'll help you guys out if you're interested in weathering some US armor. So now, let's get started. Here's the model as it sat before I started all the painting and weathering in the video. As you can see, we have a lot of different finishes on the model. We have some cast textures I reworked on the upper hull areas and also on the turret with some putty. We have some photo edge details for the headlight guards and also the periscope guards. We have resin weld seams. We have also some stretch sprue styrene rod weld seams. We have metal tracks on the model and we even have a metal gun barrel as well. And of course, no Sherman is complete without a bunch of stowage. So that's also more resin and metal and other material accessories on the model. So since we have all these different materials and finishes, I'm going to prime the model first. I'm going to be using this MIG Ammo One Shot Black Primer. I use black so this can also serve as our shadow coat. I will be spraying this on with my Badger 105 Patriot Airbrush, which I will be using throughout the rest of the video. So the application of the primer is very straightforward. I'm simply just spraying it on in a pretty thick coat, honestly, but this primer is very good and it will always flatten out. So I'm just trying to get everything painted black, especially all the nooks and crannies, because if we miss anything later, all you'll see there is black. I also painted the wheels by taping them to this handy wooden stick, which is a much more efficient way than skewers, in my opinion. Now, with the primer on, we gotta paint our tank green. Now I'm not an expert on uh, Sherman's and US armor so I'm just gonna go with this Tamiya XF62 olive drab because that's olive drab. However a closer inspection makes me think that this is going to be way too dark so I'm going to lighten it with some XF60 from Tamiya. I'll also be thinning my paints with Tamiya lacquer thinner which is the yellow cap thinner Reason being, I want to use lacquer thinner so that this paint is more durable. My mix is probably about 80% of the XF62 and then like 20% or at least as much as I can get out of the bottom of this bottle XF60. As usual, I thin my paint about 60% with lacquer thinner. I begin by applying it in a few thin coats. The key to a smooth paint finish is to not spray on the entire coverage in one pass. You want to be building up the finish in two, three, even four passes with like a thin tint almost. And when you build it up with each layer, you'll get a much more smooth finish and it will look much better. I'm spraying the paint on at about 18 PSI. With the black shadow coat exposed in the lower hull, I'm simply going to freehand the bogies here and leave most of the black showing through. I do the same thing on the wheels as well, spraying the hubs with the green and leaving the rubber exposed as just the black primer. This is good enough considering we're going to have mud on this later. With our base coat applied, I'm now going to take some hairspray. This will be important for our wear and tear effects. I'm using Trace MA Ultra Fine Mist Firm Control. Apparently you can use any hairspray, but this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to spray it on straight from the can, uh, a fair distance away from the model, just applying two thin coats over the entire thing. Don't apply a ton and flood the surface because otherwise your chips are going to be way too big. After the application of hairspray, we're going to take our previous mix and we will swap out the XF60 for XF78. And we're also going to swap out our thinner. We will now use acrylic thinner. Reason being, my new 
wooden deck tan color is lighter than the XF60, so if I make the same mix, the result will be a lighter olive drab color. Also, I'm using the acrylic thinner, not this lacquer thinner, because lacquer thinner makes the paint durable and hard to chip. If I use acrylic thinner, X20A, it'll be easier to chip this top layer of paint. So I mixed up the same ratio I did previously, which is about four parts XF62 to one part now wooden deck tan. Previously it was the darker yellow color. And it's thinned about 60% thinner to 40% paint. On the hull, you can see our lighter current mix. On the turret, you can see the darker original mix we applied before. I'm just spraying it on, same thing I did before, but we're applying this over top of the hairspray. The hairspray is important because it will allow us to chip this away and expose the darker color, which will simulate some wear and tear. So I went and cleaned my airbrush, which is about five minutes. And in that time, the paint has had enough time to dry that it's not gonna come off if I handle the model. But it's still not completely set in stone. That's important because we're gonna take some, I don't know, old scruffy brushes here that we don't really care about, and also some tap water, and we can make some chipping effects. So here's my tap water, it's just a little cup of water. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit damp with the water. You can see I wipe most of it off. And then I can rub at the surface gently, and we will start to see some chipping and wear effects form. What's happening is the water is soaking through the top layer of paint, the lighter green, and it's encountering the hairspray, and then the hairspray will dissolve because it's water soluble, and expose the underlying darker green color, which as you can see here, simulates some very nice wear and tear effects. It's pretty subtle because the darker green is not, you know, like red primer or bare steel or anything like that. It's just a slightly darker green. So the result is some subtle wear and tear effects, which is what we commonly see on US armor. Olive Drab was a very, very durable finish, and so it very rarely chips down to bare metal or the gray automotive primer underneath. Instead, it just kind of scuffs to a darker finish. And that's what you can see I'm simulating here by gently rubbing my brush against the model and exposing the darker green area, which looks like the wear and tear we want. As usual, I'm trying to keep the chips in areas that see the most wear and tear. So for example, the hatches of the turret and also maybe exposed edges, like on the sides of the mallet, the turret, the hull, and so on. Just think about what's going to see the most wear and tear. All right, now we have these photo etched headlight guards, which are definitely not going to survive rubbing over with some water. They're just going to break off. So instead, I'm going to use some sponge chipping techniques to wear them. I'm going to mix up a darker green color, simulating the darker green we applied originally with these two AK Gen 3 paints. I will just apply that with a sponge. So I'm going to get a little bit of paint on the sponge, wipe most off, similar to how you might do dry brushing. And I can gently rub this, or more like tap it, against the headlight guards. And that will give us a chipping effect without risking them breaking off. And now we have a very nice result on our tank, which I think realistically simulates how US Olive Drab gets worn and beat up in real life. There isn't really chipping effects, there's just wear and tear and scuffs and superficial damage on the areas that see the most use from the crew walking around, stowage on the tank moving around, and the tank going over obstacles and moving through bushes. You can also use the hairspray chipping technique, but instead of a darker green, Instead, you can show an underlying red primer or other effect. But today we're doing this with olive drab, so there is no primer exposed because, like I was explaining before, this paint didn't really chip in real life because it was extremely durable. And as you saw, we can easily use some sponge chipping effects to simulate this wear and tear on the more fragile details. The next step in the model is going to be to apply some markings. I think we should start with the decal application. Here I have a bunch of accessories, first of which is the actual decals themselves, which are the most important part, obviously. We also have some scissors to cut up the decals. 
I have a 1200 grit sanding sponge, which is very important, and also a pair of tweezers, which helps in the application of the decals. I also have some water to soak the decals in, and some microsol setting solution to help them adhere to the surface and to eliminate silvering. The first step is going to be to polish the surface gently with a 1200 grit sanding sponge. I am not going to apply a gloss varnish because this is all we need. Now I take the decals and I'm going to gently soak them in some warm water for about a minute or so. While that's happening, I'm going to apply some Microsol to the area where we will be applying the decal. I like to apply the Microsol first just because I find it helps in the application of the decal and making it sit nice and smooth. With the decal looking like it's ready to go, we can take it out very carefully with some tweezers. I blot off the excess water on the paper towel here, and now we can transfer it onto the model. I use my tweezers to gently correct the position and make sure it's where I want it to be and nice and straight. And now I apply more Microsol over top of the decal. There's also uh, there's, there's Microsol and Microset. I think one is supposed to go before and one after. I just use Microsol for both and it works perfectly fine in my opinion. You can see here I'm just gently pressing the decal on the surface to make sure it's nice and smooth. And that's all I do. A lot of people say you need to apply a gloss varnish to eliminate silvering, but that's a waste of time in my opinion. I don't bother with the gloss varnishes because they seem to be more trouble than they're worth. They often give me bad surface finishes and a tough time weathering later. I just polish the area for like 30 seconds with a 1200 grit sanding sponge and that's as smooth as you need to be able to apply the decal and avoid large air pockets. A decently smooth surface in combination with some setting solution like Microsol is really all you need to make sure your decals are going to sit nice and flush and are not going to experience any decal silvering. And there we go. No gloss varnish required and we have these perfectly smooth decals that look actually very good. Almost like we use masks or something. They actually look quite nice. However, they're a little bit too fresh, so I think we should wear them down to simulate the rest of the tank's finish. I'm going to use this AK Gen 3 US Dark Olive Green and apply it with a sponge, once again doing some sponge chipping. We already used the sponge chipping effect on the headlight guards if you remember, and we're doing the exact same thing here. The sponge is a very easy way to create some chipping effects because it has a natural chipping finish if you just tap it against the model. As you can see it very nicely blends with our previous wear and tear effects and it's super easy. You could probably even do the entire wear and tear effect using sponge chipping though it would definitely take a long long time. So that's why I used hairspray chipping for the majority of the wear on this tank. Next up I want to apply the stars to the tank. I didn't have any decals for this, so I actually made my own masks. I traced out a star I printed off from a piece of paper, and underneath this there was a piece of tape. So therefore I actually cut it through the paper onto the tape, and now we have a very easy mask that I apply to the turret. There's a lot of companies that make masks like this. I really like the ones from DN Models, but today I'm just making them myself on my Sherman here because they're pretty basic. So with the stars applied and masked off, we can now actually apply the white paint for the stars. Once again, we're gonna be doing some hairspray chipping. So I have some hairspray on hand. I also have some Tamiya flat white and some acrylic thinner. Once again, acrylic thinner, because I want it to be easy to chip. And we're gonna be using the same Badger 105 Patriot airbrush we've been using throughout the entire video. First up, two thin coats of hairspray over the areas that the stars are applied over. And now I take my Tamiya paint, mix it up, once again, 40% paint, 60% thinner. And now we just gently spray this over the areas where the stars are masked off on our model. As usual, I'm building it up in a couple of thin passes because I don't want to go crazy and flood the surface. After a minute or so, I carefully remove the masks 
and we see what our result is. Now considering I made these out of just some random tape I had on hand, I think these came out really, really nice. Um, I'm sure you can get maybe nicer results with some proper sets, but these don't look half bad at all. And I mean, I can easily hairspray chip them, which is something we cannot do with decals. In the exact same process that we used to create the wear and tear on the green, I'm taking a slightly damp brush and rubbing at the areas where we're going to create the hairspray chipping. Today this is just over top of the stars. On the turret stars here I'm wearing them heavily because I want to simulate the low visibility stars they sometimes did on these tanks where they really wiped away most of the paint so they were much less visible. On the star on the front of the hull here I kept the chipping much more subtle, more in tune with the rest of the markings on the tank. Now if I had used decals for the stars, I could have done the same effect by simply applying some sponge chipping over them with this dark green color, which is what we already did on the rest of the markings on the tank. The last step was to apply a couple of touch-ups of black to the tank. This was just on the wheels, because even though I was careful with my freehand application of paint, there were some areas where there was a little bit of overspray. So I can quickly repaint any areas that need to be black. I also took this opportunity to paint the machine gun barrels with the same black color. Um, but that's about all the details we have on the Sherman here. Sherman is mostly green. And now we have our tank completely base painted with some wear and tear effects built in. I think it looks pretty nice. But now we can move on to the first important weathering step, which we will cover in this video. But before we do that, I want to apply a varnish beforehand. This is important because I want to give us a much better surface finish for the wash. I'm using a VMS varnish, which is a satin finish. Not gloss, satin. In my experience, gloss is too smooth for the wash to stick nicely, so I'm going for something with a little bit more texture. You can see the varnish applied here. I just sprayed it on straight from the bottle at about 15 PSI. You can see we have a slightly shiny surface, but nothing too crazy glossy. For the wash itself, I'm going to be using the legendary MIG Productions Dark Wash. This is the go-to wash for most people. It's a very, very uh, dark brown color. It's very good on a tank like this, though if I was doing a lighter colored tank, like a German yellow tank, I would probably use a lighter color. I also have the MIG Productions Thinner, which goes with it, and this is important for the cleanup afterwards. I take the wash straight from the bottle, no thinning required, and I begin to apply it around the edges of all the details where I want to accentuate weld seams, rivets, anything really. The wash is the most important weathering step in my opinion because it makes the model look larger than life by accentuating all the nice details we have on the model. Before the wash, the finish just looks kind of flat and boring. But when you apply the wash around all the details, you can see how it flows nicely around them. It creates fake shadows which makes the details pop out and which makes the tank look larger than life. After the wash is applied, we always end up with some areas where there's some excess wash. That's inevitable, and don't worry about it at all. Since we use an enamel wash, I can simply take some of the MIG Productions corresponding enamel thinner and wipe away any stuff we don't like. This will not damage the previous acrylics in the model, because acrylics are not thinned down by enamel thinner. Only enamels and oil paints will be, so it's easy to wipe this thinner over top of the model and it will only remove the enamel paint we don't like. So I can use a brush slightly damp with this thinner to carefully wipe away any of the areas where there's a little bit of the excess pin wash. This is why I would highly recommend using an enamel or an oil paint for your wash, not an acrylic. Because if you use an acrylic, you have to use acrylic thinner to wipe away the excess, and that will damage the base acrylics on your model. If you use an oil or an enamel like we're using today, it flows really nicely as you can see here, 
and any excess can easily be wiped away with enamel thinner which will not damage acrylics. That's why you got to use oils or enamels for your washes. Let's continue the application on the hull. You can see how nicely the wash flows and it will also you know, stick to these areas. It won't spread out over the flat panels of the tank. It will stay only in the creases and details and the seam lines where I apply it. That's why I like the satin varnish because it's smooth enough that the wash will not spread out. It'll only stick to details but also the surface has enough texture that the wash will hold on to it and it's not going to get very easily wiped away later. I find that with a gloss varnish it's too smooth for the weathering to really stick. Like I said before, I think the wash is the most important weathering technique because it's incredibly powerful in accentuating all the details in the model. Things like weld seams, screws, rivets, cast texture, and so on are really, really emphasized by the application of a wash. It's super basic, it's a really, really easy technique, but it has probably the most powerful effect of any weathering process you can have on your tank. As you can see, if you mess up anywhere, you can very easily wipe it away with some thinner from areas you don't like. So if you're a beginner, you don't need to be worried. If you mess up anything, you can very easily wipe it away with some thinner, and the previous effects in your tank will not be damaged at all. With the application of the wash complete, I think that will call it quits for our US Olive Drab weathering tutorial today. As you can see, US Olive Drab is a little bit of a unique finish to weather if you're going for a historically accurate finish, of course, because you don't really chip it the same way you would any other tank. Because US Olive Drab was a very, very durable paint in real life, you don't see significant wear and tear and stuff like deep chips and scrapes like you do on maybe Russian or other tanks. Instead, you just see this heavily scuffed surface where the paint is kind of buffed down to a more matte finish which is interesting on its own. It's kind of fun to make it today using some hairspray chipping techniques and also some sponge chipping. That combined with our basic pin washing effects and also the application of some decals really accentuates their tank and makes it look like a nice US Olive Drab Sherman. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on below. I always read through them all. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters those guys really help me out making these videos. If you can support me, please consider it. It is much appreciated. And I will give you access, early access, to weathering videos like this one when I have the chance. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye and happy modeling.